Hi, I'm Dean Wolf. Welcome to my video. I'm going to demonstrate how to use a Tascam Porta 7. And just basically we're going to record on three tracks. Then we're going to bounce the third, those three tracks onto the fourth track. And then we have those tracks free again. So uh, this is a, also called ping-ponging. But it makes it so that you can have more than four tracks. If you're not intending to ping-pong, that's fine. You can just go one, two, three, four, and then you've got your four tracks. And um, so let's start. So the first thing you want to do is uh, make sure you've got a cassette in there loaded. And if you're not familiar with the whole concept, of course, A side, B side, they have left, right channel, left, right channel. So there's four tracks, actually. Someone had the brilliant idea of having a machine that would use all four tracks at the same time, running only one direction. So that's the way it's set up. I just put it on B because um, I wanted it to have a clean start for this demo. Also, it's recommended to use a Type 2. This is actually Type 1. But we're just doing a little demo. It's uh, just for demonstration purposes. Okay, want to make sure your pitch control is set at zero. Okay, it sets in the middle there. Uh, it's quickly just orient orienting you to the tape deck here. We've got uh, the play, rewind, and all that stuff here. Um, the cassette goes in there, pitch control. These are the four tracks, the, the meters. So we've got one, two, three, four. Um, this selects what you're metering. Either it's going to be the bus tracks or the tr tracks themselves. We'll have it in tracks. Here's the DBX, we have it on. Always recommended it in general if you want a quieter recording. Uh, here's the monitor headphones. Uh, make sure you plug in your headphones and yeah, get that set up. Also make sure all your EQs here are flat. We're just going to leave it neutral for now. We're not going to play around with that so much. Same with the effects, turn them all down. We're not going to get into that. I could get into that for another video if you want. Just leave a comment below. And also we'll put the pan in the middle. Although we're going to have to be fooling around with the pans quite a bit, you'll be surprised. It's just the way this one works, I don't know why. But anyways, you've got tape Q section here. So track one, two, three, four. And I always call Q, it's sort of like back of the house. And mixer is front of the house. So the Q is back of the house, it's sort of like you're seeing what's going on behind the scenes so you can monitor tracks while you're playing with them. Uh, it's not necessarily going to be how it sounds at the end when you're mixing it all. Okay, so that's the cues. Then you've got uh, this the record function here. This is this is the heart of the machine. Basically, you have to um, note that it's one and three are on bus left, and two and four are on bus right. So you can actually only record two tracks at a time at the maximum for this one. But today we're just going to be recording to one at a time. So obviously we're going to be starting on track one. So arm track one here. Blinking means it's ready to record. So we're going to look at track one. Um, I've got a guitar plugged in and I'm just going to put it in here. And we're going to use that actually for all the tracks. You don't have to move your microphone you don't have to move your microphone or instrument every time. You could just leave it in track one, and when we arm track one, it'll record there. If we arm track four, even though we've got it in the input one, it's going to record on track four, because that's all it's set to record. So um, those are the principles there for that. So back to one. Okay, so I got my guitar plugged in. Usually, you know, you want to go to the, well, it's numbered one to ten. It might be hard to see, but there's a gray area between seven and eight. You want to have the faders right about there. So put your faders there. You got your master fader here and each individual track right there. So we're going to turn down those tracks. We're not using those. Now we're ready for one, but what else do we have to do? We have to set up what the input is. And the input is this guitar. And also you have to, uh, there's three there's a toggle switch of three different choices here. You've got tape to the right, which means you will hear what's on the tape only. Uh, you've got the middle, which is off, so nothing's happening there. All the way left, and you're going to hear the mic slash line. So if an instrument, a keyboard, say, or a drum machine or whatever, you plug that in there. Um, this, is, this here, it has two preamps. So you could actually, since you can record on two channels at once, it has two preamps. It doesn't have four. It wouldn't make sense, right? Preamps are just for recording process, and um, they kind of control the... Uh, they preamplify, basically. So if you're putting in a source that's very quiet, you can turn this up. 
So you hear that? So if you don't need it to be loud, you can just leave it right to the bottom and just have the fader there. But basically the fader is where you start with. We're um, on the middle. Now this is the one thing. I don't understand it in principle why exactly it's the case, but basically whenever you're recording and uh, whatever track it is, you have to pan to that side that the bus is, is on. So, so track one is bus left, so you have to pan left. Now if you were recording to track two, you'd have to pan it over to the right. Uh, it's just the way it works. I don't know exactly why. Sorry. Anyways, let's just start recording now. So uh, first you're going to test your level. Okay, it's not even showing here. Let's make sure this is up enough. Okay, so you want the meters not to be too hot, uh, unless, that, unless that's your desire, if you're really wanting to distort it like a drum or something, because you want that saturation, that's fine. Otherwise, have it sort of medium hot, so it's not going to go over the, it's not going to overwhelm the circuitry and distort. Okay, so we're ready to go. Let's, let's make a little, uh, a little ditty here, so we can start multi-tracking multi here. Make sure the tape has run uh, to the black part because uh, it's got leader on it. I can't record a leader, a tape leader, on the take-up spool. Okay, now it's it's in uh, the area where you want it to be. By the way, it's running extra fast. It doesn't run speed of a regular commercial deck. So let's do counting in. Okay, so that's just a demonstration's purpose. Uh, I make no claims that this is an amazing song. Play what we've done so far. Take off um, the record arm, so push this to safe. And uh, push, put it on play. Or we could have it in cue. Actually, uh, let me demonstrate that quickly. Uh, turn your monitor select. I didn't even mention that the first time, sorry. It works on remix fine if you're recording there too, but let's put it on cue. Remember it says in the back of the house, right? So you're going to hear all the tracks. So you can control the volume for all the tracks right here, not here. Here, in this case. So let's push play. Okay, take the pause off there. There's my count in. You'll notice, um, well you might notice, you always lose some top end when you listen back to the tape. You'll go, hey, where did the top end go? So it's a good idea to record it with an extra top end to compensate. Okay, so by the way, um, on this unit, this doesn't really work. The, the, uh, so I'm not, I'm not really using this. So one is done. So now we're going to leave track one in line because we're going to continue using our input here and but we're going to record in two so basically you know you just keep an eye on your lights here you know what you're doing keep track of it can't really go wrong stay on cue you can't go wrong make sure your volumes for all the tracks are up that you need to hear and now the only difference is of course you're on the bus right so now you're going to have to pan over here uh, on the track you're recording on it. So it's going to go right. It's going to go to the right bus. So let's just try this. I have to make sure I hear myself uh, playing as I'm listening to track one. So that's me here, live. Okay, I hear myself. Okay, so I can hear both tracks. I can hear what I'm playing now, and I can hear what I did record. So I'm going to record here to sort of uh, spontaneously do something here. Okay, uh, not entirely.
entirely inspired. Some of it was okay. <laughs> That's the thing about this. If you wanted to plug in, there's a plug you can get here, uh, punch in remote. So say you have it on play, um, and it's all set up to record, and you push play, and you're listening to it, and right when the part comes that you need to plug in, punch in that is, you push your foot pedal, and even though you've only pushed play, suddenly the light will go solid, it'll be recording the um, punch in, so your little fixed part. Okay, I'm cueing back, I can hear both parts. That's fine. Okay, exciting. That's definitely Grammy worthy material. They'll be knocking down my doors. Okay, now we're going to record on track three. By the way, always good to go to safe between takes if you're in case you accidentally push the record button and screw up your recording. Okay, now we're going on to one three. So let's see. This actually can all be off at the moment. I have it on tape. Just keep the tracks turned off. We're listening to it through the cue. You see, through the cue section. Cue and microphones, remember? Okay. So track three. It's going to be a left bus, so we have to pan all the way to the left. And, um, again, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to... Maybe some percussion stuff. Okay. So now we've got the three tracks. So we've got the classic situation where you're going, oh, I've got two more tracks I want to do. I have two ideas, but how am I going to do that? Well, this is the ping-ponging or bouncing, which is uh, a fun thing to do. Well, to do bouncing, so this is to do bouncing now, okay? So you're going to have to make sure your headphone select are on um, remix, not on cue, remix. You're going to have, uh, by the way, we're not going to record I'm gonna. I'll just unplug this, okay? So we're not recording anything. Um, we're switching that to play or tape. Tape. We're pushing it to tape. That's a set of a a, a a similar idea. You're just going to be playing the track now. So tape, tape, tape. Turn the volumes up, and the pans are all in the middle for now. And. Because you, you, you can't, uh, it won't be going in stereo, that's for sure. You're going to one track, so it doesn't matter where the pans are, so you want to have it in the middle. Just get your levels fine. So that part's a little loud, I'll turn that a little down. By the way, we haven't, I'm not doing effects for this video. Like I said, if you wanted to try it later, it'd be nice to have some reverb on there, wouldn't it? But for demo's purpose. Okay, so I think it's just fine. We'll just push record. So we're going to record on track four now. There we go. And uh, yeah, I just realized now track four is on bus right. So that means we have to actually panel this right. And um, so it's going on to the right track. So we'll want to have it on cue now. Now that we've done the mix, it's we've heard the mix. Put this to cue. Leave all these set on tape. So tape or play, listening to the back of the house cue. And actually, if we're going to do that, maybe I only need to hear track four. Let's see if that helps. I'll turn everything down except for track four. If that works or not, I don't know. We'll try. Okay, here we go. Track four. It's all bouncing on. Let's see if it's going to work right. Oh. Yeah, these are on play. Let's see if that worked. You know, I just got this machine a couple days ago, so I have to make sure I know what I'm doing too. <laughs> so, uh, so we're going to push play. We don't want to be on cue because that's going to give us everything. We want to go on remix. So we're going to hear what remix is telling us happened. We're going to turn all the volumes down except for track four. 
put it in the middle there. Let's see, did I do it right? Okay, so now what we want to do to hear this track, we also have to make sure that that's switched to tape, okay? And in fact, let's just turn these off. We've already played them, we've turned down the volume. Four of the volumes up for tape, play. Uh, we're listening to mix, so we're going to hear exactly what is the result. Hopefully it's all there. Oh, by the way, I'm going to turn that off here. Don't want to record over that by mistake. So you can play with your EQ there if you want. See? Yeah, we did it. Okay, now the thing that confuses me, why is the meter showing all the other stuff? It says here track. Oh, okay. So it's showing you what what's on other tracks even though the volume is down. Okay. Okay, so we've recorded everything to track four. And now we just have to record in one and two and three. Which is basically the same process I already showed you. I don't need to show you that all over again. But now let's just quickly show you if you are mastering what happens when you master. So basically master you want to put mixer on your output here, your monitor select. This is what you're hearing on your headphones or if you've plugged it to a speaker monitors and you're listening there. So you got a mix and then you've got uh, play on all the tracks that you want to play. So we'll just ignore these tracks. We'll pretend that they're all the same as this, which is on tape or play, and that they're all panned left and right the way we want them to be. And we have effects on them too, reverb or something, if, we, if that's the case. And you EQ each one. And so basically you, you listen to it all on your speaker, make sure the levels are all good, adjust everything as it has to be. And then you just start from the very beginning and you get a mastering cassette t tape deck. So uh, it could be a reel to reel, could be a CD, could be a DAW. You're going into your DAW to master it there as a two track left, right, final. So then you just push play. Except it'll be at the beginning of the song. All right, so there it is. You're sending it to your mastering tape deck. And then once it's all on the mastering tape deck, once again, you can do what they call this finalization. So if this is one track of several, you'll want to compare all the tracks, make sure they're all of equal volume. and and. Uh, and you can do that in your DAW. So you have all your two tracks all together, you have spacing between them. And basically that's like having an album if you're going to master it to a cassette deck or a CD or whatever. But anyways, I wanted to just show you how to use the Task Importer 7. I think we achieved our uh, purpose there. Um, if you had used effects, basically you just would have uh, plugged a, a line out from effects out and into a reverb, say, or a pedal. It could be a reverb pedal, and then you come back, and it can come back in stereo even, uh, or mono, and then you just uh, adjust your reverb, how much of the signal you want to have wet with the reverb, and that'll be part of your uh, initial um, recording. Sometimes you can commit it to tape if you want to record with reverb. It'll be on the tape and you can't take it off, or you can leave the reverb, um, add the reverb later. So when you're playing back the cassettes, uh, the tracks, then you add your reverb, and at that point, you're, uh, say, bouncing, and the reverb will be printed permanently on that track, or the reverb will be, will be part of the uh, mastering process. So say when you're going out of the deck at the end, you just have a little reverb on everything, and it's not actually on the tape, it's just uh, being added after, and in between you and the mastering deck. So... That's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Hopefully I can answer them. And um, stay tuned for lots of more Tascam and 4-track demo videos. Talk to you later. Bye.